Today we're making laundry baskets for the bathroom so we can play a little basket underwear every morning. Boom! I started by cutting the 6mm birch plywood in smaller pieces to fit on my carving machine table. I wanted them white because I do have a color scheme on the bathroom and that's what made more sense for my case. You can totally keep the wooden look of the plywood. So these are basically some open boxes that can be hung on the wall. I wanted them to be well ventilated as well as lightweight, so making a bunch of holes was the way to go. So I jumped into Adobe Illustrator to make some shapes, which in my case were three clouds. I then repeated them all over the surfaces, creating sort of a pattern, and also made the front opening cloud shaped. You can use any other shape, it can be much simpler or intricate. I chose clouds because I like clouds and I'm making another project for the bathroom that has clouds in it, so they both match and create a theme for the space. I imported the design to Weasel, which is the free software from Inventables, and got everything ready to cut. I made all the cuts on the X-Carve using a 2 flute 1 8 straight bit. It went pretty nicely for the most part, but on two pieces the X-axis started to shift a bit because I didn't calibrate it properly. In the end I had to trim all the parts to final size on the table saw, but you won't have this problem if your machine is well adjusted. Check out the link in the description to know more about the X-Carve and see if this might be an interesting tool for your workshop. It's great for making repetitive tasks, 3D carves and bring your digital drawings and models to life and you can even create a whole business around this tool. But if you don't have access to a machine like this one, another idea would be to make this project using a router and a template with the desired shape, or even drilling a bunch of holes with a drill bit after drawing a grid over the surface. So don't be unmotivated by not having a CNC machine, as this project can totally be done with handheld power tools. The machine left a few tabs that can now be cut to pop the parts out of the main boards. I planed everything flush and kept babysitting the machine occasionally. Here I was painting one more piece that I had forgotten. I trimmed all pieces to final size because of the problem with the x-axis shifting on a few pieces and making them slightly smaller. All parts were adjusted accordingly so that they can be put together with no gaps or protrusions. I also used an off-cut piece to hold against the cross-cut sled to trim these angled pieces without having to mess up with the specific angles or creating more jigs. Having all the components set to their final dimensions, I could start gluing and nailing them together. The glue I use here is not specifically meant for this job, it's a quick setting glue that has a fast initial tack, so I can hold and pin nail the parts easier. As this plywood is pre-finished, I couldn't really use wood glue here and I will be reinforcing these joints anyway later on the build. 6mm butt joints are not exactly super strong for a large object that will be holding some weight and be handled around if we simply use wood glue. So once the five pieces were assembled, I left it overnight and came back the next day to sand and spray it with water resistant matte varnish.
To reinforce the joints, I decided to apply silicone to the inner edges and quickly made a caulking tool out of a square of acrylic. There are specific tools for this job that are very cheap, so I'll leave a link below if you need one. But I didn't have time to order, so I just went ahead and tried to make one myself. Didn't come up with the best results, but it worked. I can now start taping the rows of clouds that are very near to the edges to avoid filling all those holes with silicone. I use transparent silicone, of course, for an inconspicuous look. After applying a thick bead, I could scrape it with the caulking tool, making a better looking diagonal silicone line than if I was using my finger. I then remove the masking tape and run the tool again to fully level and scrape the remaining silicone. To hang this on the wall, I made two supports out of solid oak, since this was the primarily type of wood chosen for the bathroom to go with the white color details and the blue of the walls. I joined the strip on my brand new mini jointer and plane it flat on the thickness planer. I cut it to a width that could fit inside the hole of the back of the baskets, leaving about 10 mm for extra room. In my case, the hole was 30 mm and this strip was cut to 20 mm. I then created a rabbit to make room for the thickness of the baskets. This will work like a hook. I went ahead drilling holes and countersinking them to attach with screws to the wall. The bathroom is very small and at this point it was very packed with the laser tripod, the ladder, so the camera and tripod had to go into the shower to film the scene. Here I was marking the points on the wall for drilling. I can finally hang the baskets in their place and place some basket underwear. You don't have to hang these so high obviously, but for me it was the only alternative that I found. Living in such small spaces can be tricky, but it's also very good for our creativity and problem solving. I hope you enjoyed this project and stay tuned to see the other tiny apartment projects I've got for you. Thanks to Inventables and to my Patreon members for making this video possible. Thanks for watching, stay safe and go get your hands dirty. Até já.